Hey everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Sohan. Uh, welcome to part two of this amazing, interesting concept, or rather a video of the concepts of how to stay motivated in seven ways, especially the way these Olympians have done it. So in the first part of the video, I spoke about the first four ways of how to stay motivated. Uh, and if you've watched that video, then you, you would obviously know so. But if you have not, and you've bumped into this video part two, of the seven ways of staying motivated well just a quick recap in part one uh, of the video we spoke about the first uh, the, the, we spoke about the first four ways of staying motivated the first one was talk yourself through stress you know how to make sure that you can talk to yourself and communicate internally so that when you communicate externally through your behavior you're on top level uh, optimum level of performance the second way of staying motivated was to love or at least accept the grind. The grind meaning the practice. Accept it and enjoy it and love it with passion and do it just like the way you would when you would finally perform on the day of the outcome, whether it's your job or whether it's your personal lives, whatever way you want to apply it to. The third way of staying motivated was and is being optimistic. Although a cliche, it's yet obviously very powerful because you need to learn how to reframe things and situations in your life in a way to look at it in a positive manner. To, what, to look at a glass half full. And the day you do that and the day you master that, I promise you, I promise you, you would have felt like you, you, you would have won half the battle in whatever you're trying to achieve. The fourth way of staying motivated is to anticipate or was to anticipate things uh, before they actually occur. So I know I spoke about this and I, I found something really interesting though about this, uh, this particular concept and I thought I'll read it out to you one more time so that you'll learn from it as well. So you know the idea of uh, anticipating things before they occur was, I, I spoke in part one, was about trying to take you know not a big bite at one go but actually if you have got a big piece of a, a, a chunk of meat you want to make sure you take bites small at in, in sizes in small sizes bite by bite uh, and that meant uh, doing things moment by moment so for instance uh, one of the one of the athletes uh, and one of the navy seals um, as a in the swimming arena of, of while training as a navy seal one of the coaches spoke about how uh, the moment they'd make a, an announcement of these seals in training having to swim for 50 meters in one breath, that would freak them out. That would make them feel overwhelmed. But what they did was they would break it down for them and say to them, look, why don't you execute each stroke individually instead of the entire 50 minute, minute stroke in your head or physically? Just go by one stroke at a time. And what this does is, this is, and this is quite interesting, I found this and I'm going to read it out to you. It actually recalibrates the brain to pay attention to the body's moment by moment change it's exactly what i was saying earlier and this is by martin polis a, a psychiatric um professor at the university of california san diego he actually studies and he specializes in studying military members and top elite athletes as part of his university uh optibrain center he was then you know this man was then able to have some of these these navy seals in his experiments and this is what he said uh, he was then able to have these guys do much better than if they were beforehand saying oh my god i have to dive 50 meters in one breath that's mental so uh, if in if a particularly particularly arduous training session were to seem really overwhelming uh to to you or to an athlete guess what the brain's motivation center typically falters and you would typically get into a feeling or an emotion like you just can't go on have you felt like that before about some things uh, you just started something you know it's getting tough especially if you're in a business and you're starting up a new business and you know you've hit the wall and you're wondering how you're going to go further because you've got so much to do and so much to achieve in a short span of time or in a certain amount of time halfway there and you're going down I just feel like giving up well that's classic case of what happens to the brain uh, it actually tends to give up quicker because you're looking at a big picture and you're looking at the whole thing and going, oh my God, am I going to be able to make it happen? Am I going to be able to live up to my word? So the idea is to take a step back and it's about anticipating these things before they actually occur by doing it in moment by moment by moment, just step by step, stroke by stroke. Okay. Um, there is an interesting concept uh, and it's scientifically proven as well, but new research in this OptiBrain Center uh, by Martin Polis in San Diego suggests that a grape-sized section of the brain also known as the insular cortex the insular cortex is especially fine-tuned in top athletes helping them anticipate upcoming pressures and adapt to them quickly 
basically, what is the insula? Insula can generate strikingly accurate predictions of how the body will feel in the next moment. I repeat, the insula can generate strikingly accurate predictions of how the body will feel in the next moment. The model of the body's future condition instructs other brain areas to initiate actions that are more tailored to, to, to coming demands than those of alter rands and couch potatoes. So what this means is the insula can actually dictate your body and tell, its bo tell your body or tell the brain that controls different sections of your body both emotionally and physically how to react moment by moment. So what you've got to do is you've got to find a way to control the insula that then controls everything else. It almost seems like it's a nervous system, it's the, the, the main part of your nervous system in your head. Okay. So the idea is to train the insula to focus by moment by moment, which will then help your entire body to behave in a way, plus your attitude because it's all up in the mindset, to behave in a certain way that leads you to your final outcome. Do you understand that? Number five, let's go on to number five. So those are the first four, by the way, but now let's go to number five. In this video, I was going to talk to you about the three, the last three ways of staying motivated. Out of that, number five is stick with a coach who's more like South Korea, not North Korea. Uh, what this means is you don't want a, a coach, you know, um, whether it's a coach or somebody in your family, like a spouse or maybe your parents or someone, you, you know, your cousin, somebody dear to you, or maybe just a coach that you've got in your business or job. Um, you want to make sure that this coach is not uh, a dictator or not somebody who gives you instructions and commands you to do certain things and you just have to blindly follow. I don't think that's the best way to do it because top athletes don't just quietly listen to what the coach has to say. They ask them, so you're telling me to follow this instruction, how will this help me? And it's it's almost like parenting. I mean, there, there are studies that have shown that, you know, while par I, I'm not a parent, I'd love to be one soon, but uh, I'm not. But I know for a fact, I've seen a lot of friends, I've got a lot of friends and family, I've seen them. Um, and there are two ways of pretty, pretty much doing it. One, you can parent your child and tell them, you can discipline them by just telling them what to do without giving them an explanation and expect them to, to do it and be disciplined. The other way is, and that could work for some of you and that may not work for some of you. The other way is, and that's probably my choice, I'd do it, um, is to instruct my child to, do, to behave in a certain way, but I would give them a rational explanation. Being rational with, with uh, your kids can really cause great discipline. And I'm sure a lot of parents, a lot of you parents will agree with me on that. It's the same with coaching. You want to make sure you have a coach who will use rationale while coaching you because you want to have uh, you want to have an internalization to to rationalize with it and understand and go yeah that makes sense so if it doesn't make sense well why should I do it can you explain some more so you want to have that sort of a coach with you who will explain it to you better who will rationalize with you and give you instructions based on pure rationale and not you know straightforward instructions only um, so that's it stick with a coach who's more like South Korea not uh, North Korea number six Try mind mindfulness. Now, this is interesting. I mean, mindfulness is loosely defined as the non-judgmental focus of of, uh, of attention uh, on an experience as it happens. So, I'll give you an example um, of squash. Like, I play squash, and some of you play squash or may not. But um, even if you take, if you picture tennis, for example, uh, whatever sport you want, sport you want. Let's say you're trying to fight a point. You're trying to win a point. Um, and let's say your opponent is leading by three points and so now the score is if it was if it was tennis let's say it's um, it's a 40 nil uh, and you know you got to score you got to win that set um, in squash let's say the score is um, seven to five uh, sorry four I'm four he's seven and I'm working really hard to win that and um, if I really focus on the fact that oh, I got to really Get, I gotta win that point. I gotta win that point. Um, I gotta win the set in tennis. You might get overwhelmed and you might get distracted. But if you actually focus your energy and just be mindful of that particular point that you're about to play, you're in that moment and being present, and you go with the flow of what is going to happen. To so you enjoy the journey of that particular point in that set, I promise you, you will be completely effective because you will then enjoy and you will be and you will then be powerful enough. To, to make decisions on how to hit that shot and how to win because you're not focused on the three points now that, you, that, you, that your opponent's in the lead of but you're actually now focused on that one point that you need to live, work with so you work point by point 
you understand what I'm saying? So it's about being um, uh, non-judgmental, just running and being with the flow in that moment and enjoying it and accepting it as it comes. Enjoying and going with the flow within, in the moment. Okay, So that's about being mindful. And the final way of, the seventh way of staying motivated is to think about your next big event. So you always start your practice, you always start with the end in mind. Whether it's business, whether it's a job, whether it's a sales transaction, whether it's a professional environment, you always start with the end in mind. Even if you're a doctor and you're meeting a patient, the, you always meet your patient with the end in mind, which is to want to make sure that you let them go by making sure they feel well. Uh, whether it's sales, you want to make sure you hang up the phone, if it's a phone call sale, to make sure that your customer saw value in it and got the buy-in. If it's a business transaction, you want to ensure that your client or your business, your potential business partner, saw the value in the partnership or in the long-term benefit of getting together and doing business with you. So it's about making sure that you completely think about that big picture and have that event in front of you. When you do that and you practice, every single time thinking like you're actually doing it in that on in that big event or that that actual scenario the final transaction uh, the, the the end in mind i promise you you will see that you feel completely in the zone you feel really charged and you're ready to take action like an energizer buddy so these are the top seven ways that you can find yourself motivated or find a way to be motivated using these seven techniques this these these simple ways that I've shared with you are exactly the same that Olympic champions around the world use every single moment of their lives if they can do it to be high performance leaders you and I can too so I hope this video is really useful for you uh, I hope you enjoyed part one and this video part two um, if you did please leave your comments below if you didn't still leave your comments below and ask me any questions you may have i'm more than happy to answer them i might just ping you or ping you directly uh, reply to your comments or i'm happy to make a video if you have a suggestion of any topics that you want to cover or maybe a point or one of these ways of these seven ways that you wanted more information on that i can elaborate and share with you but i use these seven ways every single day to stay motivated and i'll tell you what i'm a living example of it and those of you who are watching this video who know me will agree that you will you will see all these seven ways that I use and demonstrate every single day of my life. So feel free to use them and practice them and, and share with me your comments and thoughts about what you thought. Uh, I hope you have an amazing day or an amazing evening no matter where you're in the world but feel free to leave your comments again and like this video and share it with people you really care about and you really want to help get them motivated in their lives to do whatever they want to achieve. Just remember that my motivation comes from my mission. Uh, my mission is nothing else but purely to empower you to achieve your prosperity and also help you to be an expression of fun and freedom. I hope you enjoyed this video once again and this is Sohan signing off. Have a great, great day. Or